In a big diplomatic win for India, the United Nations Security Council has uh, branded Jaish e Mohammed Chief Masood Azhar as a global terrorist after China finally withdrew its reservation. Uh, the move is the end of a process that India began in 2009 and is hopefully the first step towards adding pressure on Pakistan to end terror networks operating from its soil. But there are some questions. For one, was the reference to the Pulwama attacks uh, where over 40 Jawans were killed removed from the final listing in some sort of a deal with China? Hafiz Saeed and Daud Ibrahim are other names on this list of uh, global terrorists, but they haven't really been brought to book. And is this diplomatic victory for India credited to the Modi government's foreign policy. To speak on some of these issues, I'm joined now by uh, former Ambassador Virendra Gupta and uh, Pinak uh, Chakravarti, who's also former Ambassador and Distinguished Fellow at ORF. Uh, welcome to uh, both of you and thank you for joining us. Mr. Gupta, let me begin um, by asking you to put into perspective how big a deal this is and then the questions that have followed, especially about the kind of wording that went in. Uh, there are reports uh, that uh, say that there was a reference to Pulwama in the original draft, but then was later removed. Well, this is a, a diplomatic victory by any stretch of imagination. But uh, <clears throat> Masood Azhar ought to have been there a long time ago because he's been involved with deadly terrorist activities. And uh, he's been associated with Al-Qaeda and uh, jaish e Mohammed. Harkatul Ansar, all these organizations are on the proscribed list. So it was rather odd that uh, uh, some country uh, was uh, objecting to uh, putting him on the uh, sanctions list. Finally, it has been done. And I think this will uh, put pressure on Pakistan uh, to um, uh, take uh, action against the terrorist networks, uh, individuals which are operating uh, within its territory. Okay, but my question to you was very specific, uh, Mr. Gupta, so, which is why I'll reiterate, the, reiterate that portion once again, is the wordings on the note. Um, and uh, this has become a matter, matter of some questioning that initially it is being reported that there were references to the Pulwama attack on 14th Feb this year, which were later removed. Uh, that gives Pakistan some kind of a face saver. Do you think it really matters in the bigger picture? No, it doesn't, it doesn't matter at all in the big picture. You know what happens in the international uh, parlance when there are negotiations on the wordings of resolutions? Uh, some references are dropped. Uh, I think what is important is that uh, uh, Azhar Masood was uh, a terrorist, uh, was, had masterminded several activities, several terror activities in India. Uh, it would have been useful to list uh, those terror activities, but uh, I think the, the broad result of putting him on the sanctions list, now mind you, Putting him on the sanctions list also doesn't uh, uh, you know, make much of a difference. It is a symbolic um, uh, you know, victory for India. Uh, it puts pressure on Pakistan that there are uh, known uh, individuals uh, who have been involved with terrorist activities and that they are being allowed uh, to roam around freely, to propagate their views, to undertake activities. Uh, which are uh, anathematic to uh, India's security. Uh, they, they undertake freely, they encourage uh, uh, terrorist activities. And I think that is uh, where Pakistan will face the heat, increasing isolation in the international community. Um Mr. Pinak uh, Chakravarti, let me come to you uh, with what it really means at the end of the day. Now, we know uh, that Hafiz Saeed uh, is also on this list, uh, but he hasn't particularly been brought to book. Why has this been so important for India and what does it mean in terms of a diplomatic victory? Basically, uh, eventually we've got China to, to lay off blocking this um, process, which they've done four times earlier. Well, I think that uh, there has been a deal between China and Pakistan primarily because uh, China was also facing a bit of uh, heat in the Security Council because all other members were for it. Uh, 
uh, that is to designate uh, Masood Azhar as an international terrorist. And China was uh, isolated completely. So I think China also does not enjoy being isolated on, in a multilateral forum. So they must have had a deal with Pakistan, ki, look, we cannot uh, now keep blocking this anymore. So Pakistan must have also succumbed to that pressure and uh, may have asked uh, China, ki, look, you know, change the language, clean up the language so that, uh, you know, Pulwana and Kashmir is delinked from him. Because, you know, we were, we were because the last event was in, uh, the terrorist attack was in Pulwana in, in Kashmir. So I think Pakistan wanted some face saver and which was like uh, changing the language to delink. And so China agreed to that. And I think uh, we must have also finally found that if China is coming on board and are not going to stop it anymore. So we must have also agreed. This kind of changes in language is routine in uh, international diplomacy at the multilateral level. But, but the significance of this event, I mean, you call it whatever you like, diplomatic victory or whatever. But let me tell you the significance of this event. That is that the finger has again been pointed at Pakistan, once again, that it is, it is a country which harbors terrorism and that increasingly in social media, Pakistan is now called terroristan. I mean, for example, and that's becoming uh, all over social media if you look at it. So I think Pakistan has, uh, will, its, its, its image is already damaged beyond repair, I think. But then this kind of a, a finger pointing from an international organization like the United Nations, uh, obviously Pakistan will have to worry about it. Pakistan will come under more pressure. And I think if, if you, there are pressures building up in the European Parliament, for example, uh, I think over 51 MPs have signed a, uh, have signed a petition, you know, uh, saying that Pakistan is doing very little to protect its minorities and that uh, the Europe uh, must withdraw certain facilities like the GSP from Pakistan, which will be a huge blow for Pakistan's exports. The FATF, uh, for example, uh, is still considering whether to blacklist Pakistan. And once, if that happens, then Pakistan, uh, all the international credit that flows uh, into Pakistan on, on whatever account uh, will dry up. So it will cause a lot of economic uh, distress and pain to Pakistan if it continues on this policy of defying the world opinion. Uh, so then let me come to the next point of what this actually means. Uh, you, you know, Ambassador Chakravarti spoke about the uh, international pressure on Pakistan, but that pressure has been there for a while. Uh, mm -hmm. We've been showing some of the other, you know, designated uh, terrorists on that UNSC list. And uh, Hafiz Saeed is there, Dawood Ibrahim is there. Uh, Mr. Gupta, you said a little while earlier that this is symbolic. Explain to us what this really does in real terms. Uh, and if you contrast that with what India hopes uh, will happen. Well, uh, pressure is something that builds up and certainly it builds up greater pressure on Pakistan. As I was saying, uh, in real terms, it doesn't amount to very much because uh, Masood Azhar is uh, supposed to be ill. Uh, so travel ban uh, is of uh, no practical consequence. Uh, Jashe Muhammad was already a proscribed organization. So no bank accounts could have been maintained uh, under its name or Harkatul Mujahideen has also been uh, proscribed. Uh, so it's just a question of financial assets freeze in his own name. And uh, all these things can be easily circumvented. Um, so I don't think, uh, you know, we, we are not really looking at uh, this development as uh, bringing about uh, massive, uh, you know, impact on um, uh, terrorist activities uh, which are going to or which may happen in India uh, or, or that it will change Pakistan's uh, attitude towards uh, supporting terrorism, which it has used as a, as a means of a state policy. Uh, so none of that is going to happen and I think we should remain prepared to uh, safeguard uh, uh, our facilities, uh, you know, take uh, maximum precautions, uh, rely on intelligence uh, gathering. Uh, we need to invest uh, much greater effort in uh, our intelligence apparatus. Uh, so I think we have to be fully prepared 
to uh, fight this ongoing um, uh, war of attrition, uh, if I were to use that term. Uh, so in practical terms, nothing changes. Uh, it's just a, a diplomatic, a symbolic thing. Um, and you know, talking about pressure, I think it also uh, brings about greater pressure on China. Mind you, uh, uh, this uh, effort has been made by India and uh, other countries, uh, particularly France, UK and US since 2009 and uh, this was the fifth attempt uh, that was made uh, to uh, put him on the sanctions list as late as March uh, this year, in fact last month, March, uh, China uh, vetoed the proposal uh, at the UN Sanctions Committee uh, and this is very surprising because on the one hand China battles with its own problem of uh, Islamic uh, radicalism in Xinjiang province. And there are reports to suggest that uh, almost a million people have been uh, detained and uh, put in uh, what it calls training camps, but what are actually regarded as concentration camps. You know, there, is, there are reports of torture, there are reports yeah. of uh, deculturization. Uh, whatever the Chinese state can bring to bear in um, trying to deal with uh, this problem, uh, eliminate this problem. And, and despite that, uh, China does not show any uh, sympathy for uh, this problem of Islamic extremism, uh, terrorism exported from across the border. Because China must understand uh, that uh, you know, these terrorist networks are all uh, interconnected. Yes. And uh, unless uh, there is a concerted uh, uh, action by the global community, uh, you cannot really fight this out. Okay, I just want to pick up uh, from one point uh, you made, Mr. Gupta, and let me take that to Mr. Binak Chak Chakravarti, which was about the role of uh, countries like the US, UK, and France. And we'll just pull up that statement from Mike Pompeo today, uh, congratulating uh, the United States uh, for this, this diplomatic victory. Uh, there's a uh, report uh, in the Economic Times as well that China wanted this process to take place after the elections or closer uh, you know, to the end of the elections. But uh, the United States insisted it happen earlier, um, which plays uh, into the larger narrative. Do you think the Modi government uh, specifically gets credit for this move and for bringing all of these countries together? Um, you also, on the other hand, uh, have, uh, say, the United States taking credit at this point. Look, it is the very nature of politics in democracies like India and, uh, and the USA that the, the government of the day will take credit. Nothing, uh, you know, it's not rocket science to believe that this is normal. Uh, but I think what has happened is that the, the Trump administration has its own sort of uh, issues to pursue with China. So, and this was a point of pressure and leverage that the Trump pressure, the Trump administration was applying on China, I think. And, uh, and the Chinese know it because the China is having a far bigger issue with the with for example uh, on the trade front with the with the USA and this uh, the negotiations are going on very hardball negotiations are going on so uh, the Americans have sought to put additional pressure on China and I believe that this was one of the methods by which they did it now why China agreed to do it at this point in time uh, when the elections are going on is uh, is anybody's guess I mean uh, I don't think the election was particularly uh, the issue I think the issue was uh, the relations between China and the USA and USA was using this card to put pressure on China and China and once China agreed it happened China could have held out till the elections were over for that matter so why did China agree now that is the issue so in my view I don't think it was the election it was because of American uh, there are certain issues that the Chinese want to sort out with the Americans so they thought okay let me uh, let us uh, agree to this and but they did negotiate in terms of cleaning up the language to help their uh, their uh, their client state Pakistan uh, which they did so I think uh, uh, one should not see too much uh, into this as far as Indian elections are concerned the counter view is of course there that um, Trump was 
uh, Trump put on the pressure, piled on the pressure uh, because uh, elections are going on. I mean, you could make that link and argue on both sides that this was possibly also one reason. But I tend to believe that it, this was not the primary reason. Uh, no, so let me come to, back to the key question, Mr. Gupta, of uh, uh, is this um, a, a huge, uh, you know, sort of a thumbs up for the Modi government's foreign policy over the last five years? Because uh, that has also been questioned at various times. Um, do you think that, that what we're seeing today is, uh, in a sense, an impact of the Modi government's foreign policy? even though the U.S. seems to have done most of the heavy lifting? Well, as Ambassador Chakravarti said, uh, it is natural for uh, the government of the day to take uh, credit for uh, this uh, momentous uh, development. Uh, mind you, but uh, uh, effort by the Indian government has been made since 2009. But that having been said, uh, I think recent uh, developments have shown that uh, India and particularly under Prime Minister Modi is determined uh, to exhibit the kind of robustness. Uh, it has for the first time changed the narrative uh, with regard to Pakistan. Pakistan uh, was uh, in a very comfortable zone uh, that it could escalate uh, the conflict with India uh, provides support, in fact, plan and execute uh, terrorist activities uh, in India uh, without fear of any retribution and retaliation because uh, of its uh, supposed comfort level of being a nuclear state and that would prevent uh, India from taking any action. So I think Prime Minister Modi, by undertaking uh, uh, the deep penetration strikes in uh, Balakot, has uh, shown that uh, uh, you know he will uh, take uh, retaliatory action uh, against uh, these uh, activities so i think the need for uh, very robust uh, uh, you know foreign policy uh, when it comes to protecting uh, our national interest uh, robustness not in terms of uh, you know generally dealing with our neighbors i think prime minister uh, Modi has also shown uh, the kind of uh, sensitivity to uh, the concerns of our neighboring countries uh, and sought to foster economic yeah. cooperation. Look at Bangladesh. I mean, India has uh, made uh, the kind of concessions that, uh, you know, were at one point in time uh, unthinkable. So I think, uh, uh, you know, I would say uh, that there is uh, clear evidence that uh, Prime Minister Modi has uh, uh, sought to follow a very balanced uh, approach uh, to the neighbors when a robust stand is required, when he's taken robust stand, when it required a standing up to China in Doklam, he has done so. Uh, so I think, um, you know, my, my, my full uh, appreciation and commendation for uh, the foreign policy under Prime Minister Modi. Okay, then let me come to the big question. It's a, actually a political question that I'm asking uh, to non-political uh, guests. Uh, but uh, do you think that an issue like this, the designation of uh, Masood Azhar as a global terrorist and of course India's diplomatic effort which has pushed it, should be made into a political election issue. We really can't separate the timing of it and as we've seen from a slew of reactions that have come from both sides, this is definitely a political issue. Uh, the current uh, government is taking credit for it and hoping it helps them in the elections. Uh, should it be a political issue? I'll let um, Ambassador Chakravarti go first. Well, I don't think we are the ones who will decide whether it should be a political issue. The politicians will decide and do they you have think, decided do you think it to should make it be. a political do you, issue. As a, as a career so diplomat, think, uh, do you think it should be? Well, you know, if, if one were to play safe, one would say, okay, you know, because we, we are very proud of saying that we have consensus on foreign policy, yeah. uh, some kind of a bipartisan consensus that has developed over the years. Now, if we, if we believe in that, then you would probably uh, lean towards the view that, uh, that uh, let's not make this a political issue. But then I think elections, 
uh, you know, the, the diplomats don't decide what issues are to be discussed in an election campaign. The political leaders do decide that. And if they choose to do so, then we'll have to accept the fact that this will become a political issue as it has become. And I think it will be debated by the people. If one side feels that if this, if you make it a political issue, I can get more votes, then, then so be it. Because uh, it is, after all, an election and you will use any method or any any debatable point to garner votes i mean after all election is about getting maximizing your votes so i don't think that we should take make a very you know you know very black and white view of this or make a value judgment on this issue um, ambassador gupta where do you stand uh, on on this issue do you think uh, a foreign d or a diplomatic victory like this one uh, and, and the fact is symbolic or not, it's something that India has been wanting for a while and it has happened in 2019, bank smack in the middle of this huge election. Do you think it should be an election issue and uh, uh, a party hoping for re-election should project it as a big election issue? Well, I broadly agree with uh, Ambassador Chakrabarti. Uh, first of all, I'd like to say that Pulwama didn't happen because uh, Prime Minister Modi ordered it at that time. Uh, things happen uh, at their own will, uh, accidentally. And uh, it is natural for uh, anyone to uh, cite uh, uh, the accomplishments. Now, accomplishments not in terms of uh, our forces uh, having shown the valor, uh, that is a military aspect. But uh, mind you, these things don't happen in vacuum. Even uh, this decision uh, by China after so many years to uh, eventually relent uh, is, 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 uh, is a result of uh, very sustained uh, uh, diplomatic uh, and political action uh, by our government, both vis-a-vis -vis Pakistan and China. So I think it is, it is uh, very reasonable uh, for the government of the day uh, to take credit for uh, whatever accolades or whatever uh, you know, diplomatic uh, achievements uh, might have been scored. All right. We'll leave it at that. Thank you so much, uh, um, Virendra Gupta and Pinak Chakravarti, for speaking with us today. Uh, it is uh, a diplomatic win. There's no doubt about it. Uh, Masood Azhar has uh, made it to the UN uh, global terrorist list, the UNSC global terrorist list. Of course, sustained pressures are now required to make sure uh, that things reach their logical end. Thank you so much for watching.